Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. And today kicks off our PTGO lists for Forbidden Light. It is all up and running, so you can get testing the new format at last. And today we kick start with Aquabox, one of my old favourites that I'll keep trying to revitalise. And I think this is one that actually has a good shot. And although it only gains one new card from Forbidden Light, it's a very good one. And I think it's more the meta that's changing that is going to make this deck work. And what but what I mean by that is, hopefully, Zoropod is going to go down in play. Why specifically Zoropod? Well, because Golisopod is a huge issue for Lapras GX. It always has been. And um, even just the Zoroax has previously been an issue for the deck. Now it's much nicer because we have Volcanium Prism Star. But prior to this, um, Acerola Loop was just too much to handle for Lapras. But now that deck will A, be less popular, and B, we have a better answer to it. Uh, in addition, you have much nicer matchups. Things that you can one-hit KO, 190 HP Pokemon, and that is exactly the format that Lapras wants to find itself into because we have such amazing acceleration from Aquapatch and Max Elixir that we can keep up with pretty much all of them, even though Malamar is around to energy accelerate and B-Strings out, and it's all very exciting. Lapras, just using Aquapatch and Elixir, can keep up. I've actually uh, recorded already four games today with this deck just now, uh, but the audio messed up. So this is take two of the deck, but I just went four over the deck, <laughs> and I think it's pretty good. So yeah, uh, let's jump into the list and see what's happening. So first of all, Lapras GX. 190 HP is pretty much the baseline for attacking GX Pokemon these days as a basic, and it has three attacks. The first of which is Collect, which for a water allows you to draw three cards. Now this is simple, but also very effective. It really decreases the odds of you drawing dead in the early turns. And as much as I love playing the new Buzzworld with B-String, there are some janky early game hands. Now it's sort of mitigated by the fact that Jet Punch is insane for just one energy, but you can find yourself into an early game slump that you never really get out of with Buzzworld. Hopefully, with Lapras, because we have Collect, that slump can easily be drawn out of, and we can get rolling into our combo pieces. This is a combo-based deck, you need to hit lots of cards, uh, but Collect gets us out of the early game jank, which is sometimes um, an issue for the Buzzwell variant. From there, we have two powerful attacks that both cost three energy. We're only playing Waters in here, so it's pretty much the same cost. Blizzard Burn does 160 for three, and this Pokemon can't attack during your next turn, so again, it's similar to Buzzwell in that you uh, can't attack, uh, but we do have Manaphy EX and a high Guzma count to try and play around this, and 160 is a reasonable baseline, 180 uh, onto things once we've done a Volcanion Prism Star spread, um, and of course with the Choice Band we're getting to 190, or 210 with the Choice Band and the prior spread, that's why I said that um, it's much better against Zoroark these days, that's because of the Volk Prism Star. So Blizzard Burn, is pretty perfect for dealing with Lele's, uh, Buzzwalls, Ultra Necrozmas, Regular Necrozmas, Bulus, pretty much anything. So, yeah, getting one-hit kills with this guy, pretty, pretty strong. From there, we do have the only GX attacking option, which is Ice Beam GX. It does 100, and the opponent's active is now paralyzed. Um, it is good for you. Um, there's a lot less Ace of Roller being played, so this naturally gets better. Of course, Guzma is still in a high count, but they're having to move your Lapras out of the way, and the Lapras is the thing with three energies on it, so if that gets protected, that's still okay. So uh, Paralysis is a little bit better now that Acerola's seeing less play, even Zoroite decks, I believe, because of the one-hit KO nature of the metagame that I'm expecting, I believe they'll be cutting to one Acerola, maybe even not the Max Potion anymore either, so that's really good for you. Less stuff to get around Paralysis is just going to be really good for you. One thing you do have to bear in mind is that um, Dawnwing's Necrozma is seeing a lot more play, so people can play around Paralysis in the Malamar lists, so bear that in mind. But, in general, if it's late game, this could be a nice option. Combine it with an N, hope that they can't do anything if you are, for some reason, a little bit behind and can't finish off the game. So, bear that in mind, Ice Beam GX is our attack of choice. One good thing to note, actually, is that, um, similar to Buzzwell using the Absorption, although you don't take a knockout on a two-prize Pokemon, it means that the Lapras stays active to then Blizzard Burn the following turn if it can tank a hit, so bear that in mind as well. Sometimes you'll just do it um, so that the same Lapras can attack again next turn. Bear that in mind. From there, we're going to play two Mana EX. I've already mentioned how important this card is. The Aqua Tube giving you freedom of retreat for anything that has a water energy attached is just so efficient for you. Going to really mitigate the issues that Lapras would otherwise have with its attack, and it gets us in between our attackers very, very efficiently. 
it is a 120 HP two price Pokemon that chills on the bench and is quite easy to deal with. Think about things like the new Baby Boswell. It's going to prey on this quite happily, which is a concern for the deck, but um, it's just too important of ability to not play really much better than having like float stones because I've already mentioned how important the choice band math is. So we just have to grit our teeth, really. One good thing about the mana feet, it's Brooklyn Hill Search Ball, so you can get this out very early doors to get attacking on turn two. That's really what we're trying to do as often as possible. From there, the new one card from Forbidden Light is going to be this Volcanium Prison Star. It's a 160 HP non-GX Pokemon. That is a big old thing to deal with. We've seen how potent things like the Solgaleo Prism Star have been. And this guy is no different. He does have the Jet Geyser ability. Once during a turn, you may discard a Water Energy from your hand. If you do, your opponent switches their active Pokemon with one of their bench Pokemon. It's okay. I mean, it's an extra activator for Aqua Patch. This is one of the things I like the most about the card. Um, so... It's rare that you'll have a dead Aqua Patch. You'll always get value out of them. And it can be a pseudo-gusting effect. Of course, the opponent is the one choosing which target comes into the active. So you have to use it sparingly. But especially in the early turns, if people just have like a Buzzwall active or a Remoraid on the bench, you can gust that, deal with a Remoraid. Something like that is going to be nice for you. But the reason I like this card is as an attacker, in fact. For three Water Energy, you do 120 to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Now... 3 energy sounds like a lot, but not for this deck. Uh, Aqua Patch and Elixir is such a potent combination, and the switch on top of that as well. Makes it very easy to power this guy up. As I said, 160 HP is tanky, and this 20 damage snipe to the, each of your opponent's bench Pokemon, that sets up Lele's without a choice band for the Lapras, and it sets up 210 HP GX Pokemon. So that's going to be uh, stuff like your Zoroarks. It gets um, also Lycan Rock in range as well. So some pretty important stuff that the Volcanium Prison Star is hitting, whilst also doing 100 to the active. So that can be a non-GX KO. That can be like an artillery being taken out. Um, and at the same time, it's an attack that you can spam, or you can go for a two-hit KO. If the Volcanium's not going to be responded on against, for example, Volcani uh, Zoroark decks, you can hit 100. Um, they have to respond on you with like 120 or whatever. You can choice ban finish off the Zoroark that's in the active, whilst again setting up the bench for the Lapras's later on. So just a really powerful attacker, and I do find him useful. Not very useful against things like Buzzwell and um, Malamar, um, because it's such a one-hit KO race. But in other matchups, this guy really does shine, so it's a very nice one-card copy to play. From there, to help us draw, we are playing the 2-2 Artillery line. Very similar shell, really, to just Boswell lists, actually. Um, the synergy with Brooklyn Hill is obvious, and Abyssal Hand gives us great ways of getting into our final combo pieces to round out the game, be it Energy Choice Band or Guzma Choice Band or whatever it is. Artillery is going to help us get there, and we are aggressive with this deck, looking to take prizes from turn two, really, uh, or even turn one if we're going uh, second. And... Um, yeah, if we can do that, if we can hit as many GX Pokemon as possible, this Lapras is going to succeed. And Artillery lets us be greedy with our prize race and hopes to um, top up our hand size throughout the game as well, which is nice. Finally, just two Tapu Lele GX. Um, we don't need many more than this because we're not really a Bridget build. Um, and I think in general, it's going to just be a nice little safety net for us to get our important supporters out you know how broken a lele is to grab your supporters and at the same time energy drive is a two energy costing attack which is actually important to note because everything else in the deck attacks for three energy other than manaphy which just has 60 and you don't really want to sack this guy because it's such a fragile pokemon the lele however as you know can be a potent attacker especially when you play four choice band this can be something like a sauna blast into a lele it can be a fairly efficient way of taking two prizes so do bear that in mind lele can come in clutch from there, our item count is going to be 2 E-Switch. Really, really nice. It essentially acts as like a float stone when you have your abilities online for Aqua Tube. But at the same time, it's conserving energy. If one of your Lapras takes a hit, you can attach to one on the bench, Aqua Patch to one on the bench, E-Switch. Suddenly, you've got a new one, fresh, ready to go. And if they can't deal with that, it's just going to take four prizes on its own. So the E-Switches are going to be awesome for you. Conserving energy is really great especially seeing as though this deck is so hungry for energy as you can see one of the potential weaknesses is if we're missing some of these combo pieces but we are playing uh, eight cards to try and accelerate these energy four of them are going to be aqua patch getting them from the discard pile to the bench excellent news and the max elixir not always going to hit but with 13 water energies in the deck it has relatively high odds and that's just extra cream on top to get your attackers going and uh, hence the name 
turbo water or water box or aqua box, however, we, however you want to call it, really. Um, we got lots of acceleration, so there you go. Two field blower as well. I am anticipating Garbodor, especially Espeon Garb, uh, to be potent just because Psychic is a good type to hit for weakness, especially with non GX Pokemon like Trash Lanch Garbodor. So I think two field blower is reasonable right now because we are so reliant on Manaphy and Octillery. Whilst at the same time, this can also be an extra defense against things like Parallel City, because uh, of course they can not only limit your bench, which is the pain, they can also try and limit your damage output with the uh, red side of Parallel City, so that's always something to note. So with three stadiums, two blowers, I feel pretty comfortable. I really want to fit a fourth Guzma into this list, and I think if ever Garbodor reduces in play, a field blow is your first cut, um, but at the moment I'm going for the stable two count. From there, four Ultra Ball going to be nice for, again, discarding water energies for the Aqua Patch Synergy, lowering your hand size for Abyssal Hand, and just getting into your stuff in the first place. Very simple, really. Three Brooklyn Hill, we know how insane the Stadium card is. It's being played a huge amount already in things like Boswell for you, which is great for getting your dudes out, but just having these gets your dudes so, so efficiently. going to be really nice for you throughout the entire game. On to the Supporter line. Again, we're trying to mimic the... Um, Boswell list basically so just two copies of M because we're more on the aggressive side of things three copies of Cynthia for again some nice shuffle draw only three copies of Guzma really does hurt me I want to play four so badly right now I don't find any spaces for it which is the biggest shame it's a 61st card for sure um, if ever I find a slot but yeah three Guzma so potent going to help out with the Blizzard Burn text as well as well as just uh, taking two prizes each turn because that's what Lapras really wants to do and uh, from there, for Professor Sycamore, for some dump and draw, getting us into these big combo pieces, getting rid of water energies, it's all groovy. Sycamore is broken in this deck. Four copies of Choice Band, that's how important it is to take one-shots in this meta. Blizzard Burn is perfect, only when you have that Choice Band attached, so bear that in mind. The Volcanium Prism Star can potentially help out that as well, if this guy sticks around for two turns, or even just so that you set up Lele's to finish off the game. That is why he is such an important card for this list. But in general, four choice band going to be really important for, once again, the Boswells, the Ultra Necrozmas. These are the two big targets that we need to deal with. So choice band, really good for that. Finally, 13 water. Not too comfortable going any lower because I do think that you get through these a lot. Um, from the games I've just been testing even today, you do get through like 12 energies in the deck, uh, be it... Like recycling some with Aqua Patch here and there, sure, but um, you do motor through energies. You want to see manual attachments every single turn, as well as freely discarding them with Aqua Patch, having enough in deck for Elixir as well. So um, overall, I think 13 is a pretty reasonable count, and that's what I've landed on. So in terms of extra cards, I do think the list is tight and there's not many spaces. That's why I've not been able to weave in Tapu Fini, even though it does provide an excellent GX attack for us for swinging tempo especially on turns where maybe we've missed our elixirs, missed aqua patches, or just had a relatively slow start in general, Tapu Storm can get us back into the race because it's only requiring one energy from us, so we can attach elsewhere on the bench, protect our Laprises whilst also removing a threat from the opponent, so that is pretty tempting. Additionally, Hydra Shot is an extra way that we can deal with a Garbodor by sniping it, or just in general, especially if you set something up with Volcanion, uh, you can Hydra Shot finish something off, uh, even if it's with like a Choice Band in the active, of course. So um, that's pretty reasonable. It's a pretty good card. I really want to weave it in because it is a much better GX attack than Lapras is. Um, but right now, I don't really see it being better than the second uh, Field Blower. That's pretty much the card that I have in the back of my head is ever... If ever a card I'm talking about is better than another Field Blower, uh, then it goes in. But right now, I don't think it is... It's just picked the post a little bit. Another card, I said how cool um, Lele is as a... I can't spell. Lele is as a two energy attacker. This um, Keldeo from Shining Legends can do that role for you. But I think the meta is so one hit carry focused, you pretty much can't afford to go for a Resolute Claw. You just have to cross your fingers that you can get these three energy attackers out. And more often than not, you can from my experience. So... Final card I'll talk about just because it's new. It's going to be Crash Awake. You get to discard two water, or you have to discard two water energies from your hand. If you do, search your deck for two cards, put them into your hand. So this can trade out two water energies for two aqua patches. And essentially, it's like using a blacksmith. That's pretty much what you're trying to do. Um, it can, of course, be a lot more flexible. Um, but at the end of the day, um, it's so niche that I don't feel like playing one copy. Um, because there'll be hands where it's just dead and useless, and you really want to have as few useless cards as possible, because you want to insta-play as much 
as you can, so the artillery gets value. So having janky supporters um, filling up that hand is going to be awkward for you. So I think Wake isn't quite perfect in here. So yeah, that's going to be it for the 60. Let's jump onto the ladder and get some more games in because I've been having fun with this deck. It's the first card I actually got from Forbidden Light online, the Volcanium Prism Star. I just started getting games of it in with Aquabox and I'm happy with the results so far. For some reason, it's not registering a load of games that I've been having on the sidebar. So I think I've had like over 20 games with this Aquabox deck and it's just not being logged on PCGO, which is really weird. But yeah, as I said, I've already spent an hour talking about this deck, over an hour actually. Because I had four games in the last video just because I was so hyped because we were winning lots. Um, but yeah, let's uh, continue with Aquabox and see how we do. Um, last video, I got to face two Malamars and two Buzzwalls. And uh, I really hope we can try and match that with some similar decks because that's a good representation of the early meta. Looks like we're up against a Bulu though off the bat. You may think because of the grass typing we have like an auto loss. Um, it's clearly not a great matchup for us because the booty doesn't have to discard energies, but I don't think it's a straight up auto loss for us. Uh, we kick off with a Manaphy here. Um, oh man, already getting rid of an E-switch is going to be a pain. Uh, they are playing Oranguru though, so potentially it's a Zoroark deck, not a uh, Bulu. I see no reason for Bulu to play this card. So let's attach to a Lele just to get it in there. And uh, we get ourselves a Rem Raid. We have some energy acceleration potentially going on here. We have already attached this turn, so we can quite happily go for this line. Set ourselves up a Lapras and start getting some energies onto him as well. So he is threatening a turn to attack here into a Sycamore play. So not a terrible start for us. Pretty nice development turn one. Three potential energies hitting the board. And that's exactly what we like to see. There it is. Not a bad turn one at all. I'm going to leave the Lele active. I think that's pretty safe. And uh, we can't collect anyway because we're going first. So let's see what the opponent is going to be playing here. Seeing as though it's a Guru, I think you have to expect it's a Zoroark build of sorts. So if that's the case, we're going to try and set up a Volk Prism Star fairly quickly. But at the same time, pressuring Lapras early is always going to be good for us. We are going to see a straight away a Cynthia. That's not a Bridget, so that's good for us. It's a Hooper deck. Okay. Quad Hooper. Um, our Volk Prism Star is going to be good here. Um, so that's always nice. They actually get their Hooper attacking turn one, which is pretty crazy. Uh, we've already lost one of our E-switches, which is a bit of a pain. Uh, but we're going to hope to power up our Volk. Get a bunch of energies. That's pretty janky. Gonna attach for Lapras. We obviously can't lower the hand size much more than this. I could go for Paralysis. Oh no, we can't. It's all effects, including damage. So if he gets a Choice Band or a Field Blower next, uh, not Field Blower, or a Fury Belt next turn, this can go down. We don't really want to commit. Um, attachments anywhere else so i think we're just going to retreat collect here get us out of this funky hand that we've got going on we have to try and get into this prism star before he sets up multiple hoopers we want to get the first hit in so that one prism star is going to deal with three hoopers that we, that's what we have to hope for really they are going to go for another cynthia here we are a little bit light on the old non-gx attacker front there is the fury belt so at least we got out of there while we could and Lapras is going to take a hit here. No sign of Brooklet Hill or Ultra Ball. So that's a bit of a shame. It could just be a Guzma KO here. Mm, it's not great. It's really not great. Hmm. I really don't want to Sycamore away an Aqua Patch and an E-Switch. Those cards are really good. I'm just considering whether dealing with this Guru is better or worse than just collecting for three cards. I think collecting is correct. Do I have to start attaching to an Octillery is the sad reality that I need to start thinking about. I think one energy is fine. 
This deck actually burns a lot of energy, so it's reasonable. Hope for no Kukui this turn, I guess. There's a Mewtwo. And a Sycamore as well. So they're playing Nest Balls. Here comes the army of Hooper. Let's have a Coco as well. Coco going to put that in range. That's scary. So I think we've got to deal with a Coco this turn. Man, this is really rough. Do I just need to Cynthia this hand? I think I do. We only really care about the <laughs> Prism Star. There he is. Now we can try and gust something out of the way, but it'll just bring up the Coco anyway. I'm happy to put Brooklyn Hill in. It gets us an extra draw. And we're just going to go for Collect, I think, again. And my cat's here being loud. So, having to delete a video with just Malamar and Buzzworld decks and having to record a video with Quad Hooper makes me very upset. And the Volk is getting hit. Hmm. Fun. <laughs> my cat's freaking out down here. This hand is terrible, yo. We're so out of here. Okay, so we don't have the tools to beat Hooper when we give them six turns. That's what we've learned there. I think the Volk Prism Star, if you are the one being proactive, you can probably sweep that list. But we do only play one non-GX. I don't respect Hooper as an archetype much anymore. Um, because Zoroark decks are going down in play. Garbodor decks probably going up in play. And the Malamar decks are all playing non-GX techs everywhere, so I'm personally not concerned that we lost that matchup. I think we can even beat it, to be honest, so uh, I really don't care about that too much. <laughs> Let's move on. I guess that's the attitude that makes it continue to be playable, but whatever. So we're just going to go ahead and grab a Lapras straight off the bat. Uh, Coco Lele. Hmm. Seeing this makes me want to actually grab a Volk. Because he seems like a better attacker that can spam against non GXs. So let's just power him up. Got to think now, do I want to get an attachment in? Or I could try and force this Lele active straight away, denying him an early flying flip. Um, he gets an extra water in the discard pile, but it could be an attached water energy, which is the only thing. I don't mind attaching to the active here. Not too concerned about a flying flip if it's just going to be for this amount. Um... Now we have to debate whether or not to get a Remoraid down. I think Remoraid seems reasonable, even though it's uh, Coco staring us down. Next turn, we're going to try and get down a Mana Fee. Okay, seems good. Obviously not going to bench the other Lapras, because it's just free damage. More Cocos. I wonder if it's a Zoroark build. If it's playing Nest Ball, probably not. <laughs> You'd think Zoroark would just play Bridget's. 
There's a counter energy, so they're missing out on an attack this turn, which is good for us. They're gonna Cynthia. Excuse the squeaky chair nonsense, my leg is still in bad shape. We've got Poe Town, sure. Energy Lotto coming in. If only we still had rough seas in the format. Grabbing a fairy energy. Wild. Absolutely wild. So, we don't need choice ban, but I'll still commit it. We're going to have to prioritize getting a Manaphy over getting a uh, Octillery here, because we want to get attacking ASAP. We're going to get the Brooklyn Hill, move that Po Town out of the way. We're going to start playing some Elixirs. This can actually play around there. Spread. <laughs> GG. I just I just remember that this thing does things. What fun. I'm still going to power up the Lapras. I mean, we can even, like, we're threatening the Manaphy without him knowing it. So that's cool. We're going to go for the old Sauna Blast. Set, sets up the Coco to be spread next turn by us. We're Coco, but better, basically. We are weak to Lightning, is a small concern. But they're playing Fury Belts instead of Choice Bands. Oh, the Choice Band does nothing. Okay, Fury Belts better. <laughs> ha ha. There is the old Flying Flipper Rooney. We do have the Guzma. I uh, just got to think what I'd rather take out here. Do I rather take out the Guru or the Lele? I think we just take out the Guru. And we will attach one to Lele, uh, to Manaphy. I don't want to get any more bench Pokemon out, it doesn't make sense. We'll take our one prize here, and our one prize on the active as well. Picking up a supporter, which is nice. Aqua patch as well. They attach a second counter energy. Thinking, thinking very hard. Special charging in a DCE, sure. Oh, they're going for electric ball, I see. They see the lines, they see the, the real threat, the MVP. So we'll just go into our Lapras. And we got to think whether or not we want to get another Pokemon out here. Um, it's more free spreads for him. Five, six, seven, eight. Mm, I think we have time, you know, and we'll need to bounce between our Laprases. So I think it's correct. And if it comes down to it, we still have the Manaphy plays available. I would have liked to get one more hit in with this guy so the Manaphy could finish off the Lele, take prizes whilst doing our shenanigans, but oh well. Our healing shenanigans. We can also get out of Remoraid whilst there's no Po Town. Let's do that. <laughs> it's funny that we're just playing the weird stuff now. Uh, the recording was so perfect except for the volume. Hopefully this audio is okay, otherwise I'll be very upset. Um, we will feel blower. 
We're no longer concerned about them playing Po Towns, and this way we get to Ice Beam GX. Which I want to do, because then the Lapras can stay active with no concerns. Three prizes to go. We currently have 60 damage on our board. And they've already played two counter energies and the special charges out of the way as well. They're going to Ultra Ball. Grabbing another Coco. Sure thing. Why not? And they're going to Cynthia it up. Us being able to Guzma this with Manaphy is going to be great. Oh man, we d he's just going to give it to us. We don't even need to Guzma. Insane. I'm not going to think twice about doing this. Yeah, they concede. <laughs> Reads Manaphy. Draw drops. <laughs> okay. And when the ladder finally lets me, we'll go on for another game. Here we go. Looks to be a buzzwell. Psychic metal fighting? Maybe it's beast box. We'll see. There's a Dawn Wings, which does... Maybe it's... Yeah, okay, it's Beast Box. <laughs> I was like, well, maybe. Nah, it's definitely Beast Box. Again, Buzzwall down. Getting rid of two Guzma and a Beast Ring. That ain't bad. There's Poiple. Little Poiple. Oh, that's a... Hideous top deck, not like this. Okay, I'm not scared that we're going to get knocked out. I'd rather Guzma the... Okay, let me think. He'd rather put a floatstone on here, but his best attack is a jet punch anyway, right? Well, it could be an attack with a Naganadel. We could always just Ultra Ball. Uh, I should have actually not attached this. I should have just Ultra Balled away the Guzma in the water and grabbed Lele for Cynthia. I can still do that though. Yeah, we can still do it. Let's not get too funky from the offset. We still have Collect to fall back on if this Cynthia's trash. Man, if he ain't bad. I kind of like... Yeah, uh, okay. I was thinking of holding it, but we already have the E-switch, so it's reasonable just to get it on. And we'll draw some cards, because, as predicted, the hand is poor. And it's still pretty poor. Damn. Rough start from us. You can see... The combo can so easily be beautiful, but at the same time, it can be a little rough. I mean, that said, we do have 190 coming out next turn. Eh, they're going to end us regardless, just because the hand size was large. Makes sense. They're going to ultra space for an Aganadel. Let's see if they got themselves a float stone. Third Buzzwell. There it all is. 
So maximum damage, 120. Pow, pow. And when you're up against one, uh, 210 HP Pokemon, once again, Volk Prism Star is the MVP. So we'll get him slapped down real quick. Um, how realistic is it for us to actually attack with this Ultra, uh, this Volk this turn? It's actually fairly reasonable. I think I'm attaching to it. I just got to think if I want to Sauna Blast. Oh, sorry, if I want to Jet Geyser. I think I do want to Jet Geyser. Because we only need to put 20 on this guy, really. Even if he feeds us the Poipal, it makes it more awkward for him later down the line. Let's see what he wants to give us. Yeah, he's going to give us a Buzzwell. That's fine. And we'll sick them all. Getting more waters in the bin. Getting us more combo pieces. We actually whiff pretty hard there. Oh, this is going to be rough. This is definitely going to be rough. Normally very efficient at racing. Not even an elixir, so we can't even like energy drive for some token damage. Looks like we just go for patch collect. Very slow. The hope is that they don't have a floatstone again. Not ideal for us. They do have choice band attached. Not a KO, but it is, you know, pretty much there. We can get ourselves Sushi Master. Also, Lapras can come down. Do I want to shift this Buzzwell out of the way? I mean, we could even try and set up the Manaphy here. Uh, it's just too nice for his Naganadel. Okay, we need to attack with the Volk. One thirty. How much better is that than? No, we need to save the choice bands for the Naganadel. I'm gonna slap one of these over here. If the game won't freeze, good. And do I want to put this energy in the bin? No. Alrighty. I don't mind playing this out there. We'll freely retreat, get our sauna blast off, set that pesky Naganadel up for future turns. Uh. This Lapras is looking very tasty for them, though. They can replace with Ultra Space, but then we can replace back, so we're thinning as many cards as possible. They're getting themselves, of course, the other Neganadal. They're in range, though, so they're just as fragile as anything else. They actually play as a roller, which is okay. It doesn't actually change much here. Yeah, I take that back. It does actually change something. The Solar Blast would be taking two prizes. <laughs> and that makes me sad, because now we need to go in with another Lapras. But it should be fine. As long as we don't continue to whiff like we have been. I think, yeah, we've already lost an end, so I'm not going to get rid of another one here. I'm just going to Cynthia... Again, valuing the choice bands very highly, so I'm not just throwing them down willy-nilly. We actually do miss energy. Going to lower the hand size so I can hope to get a turn attachment from here. Uh, let's actually do this first. And we'll draw three. Mmm, sad times. So, 
we... Oh, for some reason my thing's going off. Oh well, let's go for the Blizzard Burn. The KO. Let's see what Beast Ring shenanigans they can come up with. We are currently behind on the race, which is actually rare for this deck, believe it or not. They go in with their Naganadol straight off the bat, which is interesting. Maybe they don't have Beast Rings available. If they're an Ace Roller build, they may not even play Beast Rings. Let's find out. They attach to the bench Buzzwell, Choice Band to the bench as well. Floatstone here, so they're just setting everything up. Let's see if their Cynthia gets them into Beast Rings. Field Blower. Indicates that they probably didn't get the KO here. Choice Band to the active. And no KO, so that's really good for us. Now then, we really, really want to... KO the Naganadal, and we really want to attach energy this turn. Uh, pesky old Lapras with its old text. So I'm going to have to commit a few cards here so that Octillery can get us into energy attachments because it's going to be a bit of a shame if we continue to miss out on attachments. Definitely will be a shame. There we go. And now we're ahead. And our bench Lapras is ready to go. So we've stormed back into the lead. And every one of their Pokemon on their board is a two prize attacker right now. So it's looking pretty reasonable for us after the sloppy start and the Acerola being pretty cheeky. Oh, they actually did play B-Strings. Looks like they got a little unlucky on their Cynthia turn, although they had already discarded one, in fairness. And once again, they follow up with Cynthia. Here comes Field Blower. How many choice bands do we have left? Just one. This does have 160 though. So now they're down to two prize cards. So let's check our deck. We have one choice band in there and we'll be drawing seven cards out of the eight card deck. You already know that we've missed it, right? <laughs> the alternative... <laughs> the alternative is to N and um, Abyssal. It makes us less likely to hit. They've gone through three Guzmas. Uh, the fact they've gone through three Guzmas in addition to everything else makes me want a Sycamore so badly. So rare that we miss. Can we actually play enough cards to Abyssal Hand anyway? I think we can. Yeah, we could have guaranteed it with discards and Abyssal. Sweating over nothing. And that's why four Choice Band is essential to this list. Because they are crucial for the one-hit KOs, as I've already mentioned. That's why we're missing so many energy cards. Nice win there. So a loss to Quad Hooper. We beat the spread deck, which is a nice thing to just have an auto win against. And we beat a beast box. And it looks like Water Psychic. Could we have found a mirror? Could this be? What else could be Water Psychic? If I face Greninja, I'm going to be sad face. Uh, 
Greninja matchups actually, again, far improved because of Volcanium Prism Star. One of the previous issues was that 160 isn't 170. And in the early turns, doing 160 and having to then get a new attacker every time is really bad for you. But now Volcanium Prism Star is that perfect balance of hitting hard whilst also setting up damage so and being able to spam. Looks like we're up against an Empoleon. We're pretty good at being able to maintain our bench. Like we'll have Octillery, Lapras, Manaphy, and like one other attacker. We can limit our bench fairly comfortably here. Our hand isn't fantastic, but we do have Energy Elixir. So we could even attach Elixir Hit, Lapras, Retreat, and Collect. So we could, as long as this is kind to us, we can be out of a bad spot. I'm going to go for Lele Bridget. It's an Empoleon deck, so I shouldn't be that scared, really. We are, of course, much better at dealing with two prize attacking decks than one prize deck, as I've already mentioned. But we'll see. We'll see. Drawing into a Guzma. Means that we can actually, uh, we don't need to hit this elixir. I'll still play it, of course. We do hit it, and we're gonna try and target the little boy. Gonna feel blur as well. Get it out. Uh, hmm. Okay, what am I scared of, really? It's just removing choice bands from them, but also getting rid of the brooklet means he can't get another remoraid straight down. It's a bit of a pain for us, but we're hoping that we collect ourselves into goodness. Yeah, that's that's the definition of goodness right there. More or less. They get themselves rare candy and polion. Feels good, man. Floatstone as well. Nice. No aqua patch activation just yet, so we don't have to be too concerned about a total command this turn. Looks like they're just going to grab Vulpix. Go for ye olde beacon plays. Pretty good. So we want to deny this beacon and we want to set up. So let's go for Lele for N here. It's our only N, but I think it'll... Like, I, I doubt we'll be behind on prices, to be honest. So Should be all right. We want to start developing this Volk Prism Star because he's going to be cool for us. Brooklyn Hill comes back to us, which is cool. We can get that roll in now. Potentially me feel blurring it away was a bit of a... Risky move. Let's get this guy down. We can go for a Jet Geyser if we want to. Uh, I guess KOing a Piplop's better for us than KOing this Vulpix. So we will use Jet Geyser to great effect this turn. Much rather deal with a Piplop than a Alolan Vulpix. Thank you. Thank you, Volk Prism Star. Coming this choice band feels fine as well. May as well be to the Prism Star, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attack with it at some point and spread this Lele. And I'm going to go for Ice Beam GX here, so that the Lapras can attack again on his Empoleon that comes in, if we need it to. I want to be able to use Sauna Blast when it's taking a KO, probably on the Octillery at some point in the game. The Empoleons will never be, or they're unlikely to be set up enough for Sauna Blast to actually knock them out, but they'll be good for the lower stuff. They're going to go for the Rescue Stretcher. They can combo with the Brooklet Hill if they want to. Here comes Empoleon. Do they have choice band? No. Phew! Could have been scary. We're gonna have to 
play these cards. Going to pull out another Lapras here. Losing an Aqua Patch for no value is rare and sad, but oh well. Here comes Sushi Master. We'll get an attachment in on Lapras because we don't have Guzma. So we want to set up the Lapras for the potential incoming Empoleon. Or, you know, anything can finish us off. A Peck with a Choice Band can finish us off. So we'll also throw the Ultra Ball out there. Gets the Aqua Patch rolling, and it means we can get some Abyssal Hand draws. We will go for this, and if we get really lucky, we can attack with a fresh Lapras and make life awkward for them. We do get the E-Switch, so I think we will preserve this Lapras. It means he has to get a real attacker out, rather than just a prod. And we'll blizzard burn this guy. Perfect numbers, fortunately. In comes Remoraid. Keldeo is up in here. They could be playing counter energies in some capacity. There's a basic water. Oh, of course, aqua patches as well. Looks like they have nothing, so they're they're stuck beaconing. Let's throw down the field blower once again, getting rid of our own stadium. We have the option of. Guzma up the Piplup and deal with it, or the N. I like Guzmaring Piplup. I think it's fine. Should be able to run him out of Empoleons relatively easily. Oh, the free attachment is excellent. Nice draw from the Sushi Master there. Wouldn't ideal to attack with a Volk this turn, but not to be. Pulling more energy from prizes is nice. Now we face such jank stuff. I really want to upload my other video just because we played better games. Uh, that's life, I guess. Artillery and Primplup coming down. Got the bubble beam coming in. Here we go. Are we paralyzed? Whoops. And we've already got rid of two Guzmas and we can't lower our hand size enough. Uh, I guess we could draw one card. It has to be exactly Guzma though. That is a feels bad man right there. Let's refresh his hand, it's full of supporters. We can do better. Let's just set up this Lapras. We haven't actually gone for a Sauna Blast yet all game. Do I want to move this Empoleon? Uh, sorry, this Primplup, because they've got rid of one Floatstone. Yeah, sure. It forces an extra card from them. May force a Guzma on their end. It may just be an extra awkward thing for them to have to do. Let's see how it goes. There's Empoleon. Water energy. Cynthia. 
So they're hoping to hit float stone. There's a brooklet. Grabbing another piplup. Aquapatch. Onto the piplup. Okay. Abyssal hand, one more try. No dice. Well, that's pretty rough. And they're going to grab a Lele off that. Okay. Their only beacon target, which tells me we, they basically already have Candy and Polian, right? Let's spread some energies around, play this end. Just trying to thin as much as possible at this point. I don't want to play the Aqua Patch, I don't think it's worth. And we will finally go for the Sauna Blast. Not going to go for the Jack Geyser because they could just promote this Keldeo and that's really bad for us. So In comes Octillery, so they're looking to Guzma us. It looks like. Oh no, they have Floatstone. There's a, there's also that possibility. Aqua Patch coming down. Attachment to the Keldeo as well. Another Remoraid dropping onto the board. But I mean, shouldn't have been much doubt that we could tackle this deck. The new Metal Empoleon hasn't changed that much to the format, <laughs> unfortunately. Here's Guzma. Going to be for the help, healthy Lapras, as you'd expect. Total command of the situation. We'll go into our Volk. Let's see if our third Guzma's in deck. I'm not actually sure. Yeah, it is. It is. And as you can see, the deck naturally thins itself so much. Every game I've been at like a 10 or lower card deck. And that's really good. That's, that's what you're after in Pokemon. A deck that naturally thins itself is just going to have a much better rim weight because you don't have jank just have the good stuff left and that's the stuff that wins games so there's an Empoleon win three wins against really random decks and the loss against Hoopa I'm so salty that we didn't get to well I guess the beast box isn't a random deck but it wasn't Malamar and it wasn't Buzzrock so I guess you guys are going to have to test that out for yourself take my word for it that I was winning those games and I'm really praying that this audio is working much better um, this time around hopefully it's good but let me know what you guys think about Aquabox um, is it any improved will it just stay in the binder forever will Zoropod go away what do you think about the list itself um, it's positioning in the meta what decks are you enjoying from Forbidden Light so far what decks do you want to see in the future? I'm going to be doing ones daily, I think, uh, whilst Forbidden Light is out. I'm going to have to update a bunch of old lists as well. So it's a good time to be playing Pokemon. Very exciting stuff. And uh, get it all down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Leave a like and all that good stuff. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Cheers.